How's it going, everyone? If anyone's here. I have no idea. Ah, thanks for joining. Um, yeah, we've got some cool stuff today. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to do some uh, simulation stuff, which is going to be super fun and super cool. Um, so I did a few tests before the stream started as well. And uh, it's going to be pretty cool to see. <laughs> you can see here it's already doing its thing. So I'm going to teach you guys how to do this. And then... Um, I'm going to uh, try and apply it to that dinosaur animation. So I did the I animated the dinosaur earlier today, and um, I figured, yeah, we'll start off try and get this up and running first, and then we'll try and transfer those sort of uh, principles, I guess, to um, yeah, to the uh, dinosaur. So here's a dinosaur here, and I actually just took this dinosaur rig from online. I took it from our uh, blend swap. So let's check this out. Uh, let's just turn off everything. So if you haven't seen the tweet earlier today, I animated this guy up this morning. Uh, yeah, I did not rig this. I did not model it. It's just a straight up. Um, just took this completely from uh, blend swap. Mike, Mike is low. All right, cool. How's that? A bit better. How's that going? Is that a bit loud, louder? I had to tip, turn up the game. More? <laughs> Shit. All right. How's that? Better? <laughs> if not, I'll just fix it up on uh, OBS. How's... Uh, yeah. I'm just close to clipping. Hey, how you doing though? Not, not Alexander. Awesome. Sweet. All right. Um, yeah. So we'll start off with uh, trying to get this... Um, I think we're going to start off with trying to get the um, this up and running just as a, as a sample. I'll show you how that works. How's it going, guys? Um, but yeah, we'll get this up and running. And uh, it's really easy, actually, all things considered. It's not that difficult to um, get this, uh, this basic idea up and running. And this is really great for maybe some, um, if you want to add like a bit of uh, wrinkling to animals, um, maybe even a, like if you had an old guy and you had a bit of... Um, <laughs> totally um if you had an old guy with a bit of uh wrinkles at the on his um his uh neck maybe you wanted to add a little bit of that to um his um you know a little bit of jiggle without having to rig it uh, you can do it with some simulation um you can also do this to actual clothing as well so i can show you how that works possibly as well as we um get more into this so uh let's we'll do it two, we'll do two experiments we'll do one like this where it's sort of like the wrinkling of like you know uh around the joint and then we'll do another one where it's um wrinkling like as if it was like a, a bit of clothing attached to um another character for instance all right so let's uh make a new version of this i'm gonna uh just hide this guy and i'm gonna make a new collection call it stream uh i'm using 2.9 now uh that just came out what three days ago four days ago um, but, uh, yeah, 2.9 is mad. Uh, it's so good. Like it has so many quality of life changes. It's, uh, it's ridiculous how much better it is than 2.83. Um, yeah, it's kind of sad that the long-term release is on, uh, 2.83, not on, um, not on, uh, 2.9 because there's some things that just are better. Anyway, um, let's make a cube. And let's bring that up in the Z. And I'm going to just elongate that on the top, like so. I'll turn on the screencast as well, just so you know what I'm doing. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna make a really simple like tubular um, setup here. So I'm gonna add some um, edge loops down the center line. And I'll add a couple down the center there and a couple down the center there. So we get this sort of setup going. And that's basically all we need for the actual uh, test to work. So we're just gonna add a, um, we'll add a subdivision surface as well, just so we add some more geometry. 
I haven't tried the new multi-res stuff yet. Um, I haven't had a chance to do much sculpting but it's beyond what I've been working on um, for Ragnar. If you've seen the, Ra the Ragnar sketch, I'm still working on the on the Ragnar model so I can actually continue with the, the other tutorials. But um, hopefully I'll get that up and running this week. Anyway, we've got a single bone. Uh, add a single bone armature to the front and then turn on in front on the armature as well in the viewport setting so you can see what's going on. And we're just going to do a really simple setup here. So just two joints and I'm going to subdivide that. And then I might, I might actually give it a little bit of a bend just so, um, you know, we don't get as much compression in the center there. All right. Oh, thank you by the way, uh, for the compliments. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to just do a quick automatic weighting with automatic weights and then we can just animate that and see how it's working. It's working pretty good. Pretty straightforward sort of setup. And I'm going to add some straight up animation, um, 80 frames. And I'm just going to animate that movement like so. And if you're wondering how I'm getting that menu, there is um, an extended menu that you can uh, turn on in the add-ons section. Um, if you go to uh, add-ons and then type in, I think attributes, I think it was attributes, copy attributes menu. That's a good one to have. And I, I, I like having that one on. Um, and it gives you more options when it comes to like rigging and copying things across like um, constraints and shit like that. Anyway, so we got that uh, up and running. Very simple setup. So now all we're going to do is add uh, another subdivision to this. Um, well, first we need to move the armature above the subdivision because we're going to use the um, the extra geometry to use for um, the cloth. So we need to move this across up. And this is the nice thing about Blender 2.9 is that you just have to cl click and drag. <laughs> Fucking awesome. So much better than having to click up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, and you can see it's, it's manipulating. It looks a bit better now as well in the um, in the viewport there as well. So I'm going to add another uh, viewport uh, subdivision. So it's pretty dense now. So if you look at the um, the wireframe, turn off uh, optimal display, and you'll see that's is actually the subdivision that we have at the moment. All right. So what we need to do now is add the cloth modifier. And um, yeah, pretty straightforward. Just add a cloth. And we're just going to go straight into the um, the properties tab for the physics for the cloth by pushing this button. And I'm going to change the preset from whatever this is default to um, something like silk. And you can see it changes automatically changes the um, the attributes that we need. So it basically makes it more um, softer. It the, the deform the deformation is much um, I guess a much more much more pronounced when it's silky. And um, the problem is now that when we do the animation, it just starts to fall off into nothingness. <laughs> so what we need to do is add a pinning group to the um, to this uh, geometry, and we do that through adding a um, we do it through adding a vertex weight. So in this case, we're going to call it pinning. And if we go to our weight paint. And we're just going to flood this whole thing with um, with a, a weight of one. So I'm just going to paint the whole thing for now, just to demonstrate what's going on. So I'm just going to paint the whole thing with a, a grand total of one, with a weight of one and a strength of one. So we get something like this. And now if we go back to our physics, uh, our real time view, nothing's really happening because we need to assign the pin to that geometry. So what we need to do is go straight into the, uh, the modifier settings for the cloth and scroll down to pinning. And we need to assign the pinning group to that object. Now let's see what happens. Ah, oh, shit, not much. Not much is happening because we've actually pinned the entire geometry to the, um, the setup here. So now what we don't need to do is we need to erase some of the influence of the pinning to uh, where we want it. So in this case, it's going to be where that elbow is, where it's bending. 
So if we go into our um, pinning vertex group and go to weight paint, and this time have a weight of zero with a strength of one. And we're going to sort of erase some of that weighting. So if we erase some of that weighting, like so, you'll see how, how it behaves basically. All right. So once we've done that, we can also smooth it out, smooth out this weight. Ah, uh, good Duma, thank you. Uh, um, yeah, it's going well. Uh, we're in lockdown for another two weeks in Victoria, in Melbourne, because of the uh, COVIDs. <laughs> so uh, I got plenty of time to work on this sort of shit. That's for sure. Uh, teaching starts again tomorrow as well, which is going to be fun. Um, all right, so I'm going to smooth all that out. So we have something like that going on. Now let's check out what happens when we um, when we break when we start animating this. Ooh, straight up, we got some uh, pretty cool uh, deformation going on. And the cool thing about the pinning is that it's avoiding the other parts that we have um, we've weight painted. So if you had a, a weight paint of one completely, you wouldn't get this um, slight deformation there. But we have a few things we can fix up on this. So you can see here it's crushing in on itself a little bit still. So what we can do, we can actually add um, in the cloth setting some self collisions. We turn that on. And if we switch that to maybe a distance of 0 0.05, maybe. Or maybe even 0.1. Let's just try that out first, 0.1. And give that a go. It's going to run a bit slower now because it's colliding on itself. You can see that this, the uh, this, the um, the crushing is a little bit better. And if we turn on smooth shading, you can see how it's working. How cool is that? And once it buffers, it will start behaving a bit faster. There you go. And obviously, the faster your computer, the better the performance is with this sort of stuff, especially with um, especially with um, simulation stuff like this. So normally you'd bake this in at the end, but as a demonstration, it's working pretty good. So let's try and um, uh, animate the bone and see, like we'll try and moving it back and forwards and see if the cloth still works with it. So let's um, add a keyframe in the, um, the bottom bone and I'm just going to move it back and forth. Don't worry about the shearing. That's um, just, just an effect of me not caching the um, animation. Now let's try and see what happens. Oh, it's working pretty good. Pretty damn good. So it's actually working with the cloth. But if you want to have it look a little bit less extreme where it's sort of um, not gathering as much um, momentum and stuff. In the, uh, you know, the settings here, we can actually turn on a few things. So in the cloth settings, if we go down to uh, dynamic mesh and turn that on, it actually takes the deformation into consideration from the armature and you get a slightly different result. It's a little bit more subtle. And it's really, that's really great for like small wrinkles, really great for small wrinkles. Like, you know, maybe an elbow bend or some, if you really wanted to get some realistic um, compression into the, um, the fingers of your hand and stuff like that. We can also turn off gravity, which is interesting as well. We can actually turn off the gravity effect. So we only don't we don't we only get the crushing you know based on the movement of the object, which is really cool. So how do we can we can do this? We can play with this in different ways. So the cool thing is that we can actually apply this with um, clothing. So imagine if you have a character that has like a jacket on or a skirt, and you want that uh, skirt to sort of stay pinned to her waist, but um, you want the bottom to be billowy. So let's give that a go. Let's give that a go. It's going to be pretty cool to do. So in this case, we're going to make a, um, let's make this, let's just duplicate this, uh, this setup here. Duplicate. But in this case, I'm going to erase. I'm going to take off the, um, I'm going to turn off the cloth. I'm going to get rid of that. So I'm going to go into the, um, the cloth settings and turn that off. So this one just has straight up just animation on it. Nothing fancy. All right. But what we will do, let's add a, um, this is Blender 2.9. Yes, it is. Yeah. 
Um, but the settings that we're using here are the same as 2.83. So um, instead of deforming this with some cloth, let's add a uh, address to this thing. So I'm going to duplicate, I'm going to go into edit mode and just duplicate some faces and separate them. Like so. Duplicate. And then push P to separate the selection to its own geometry. And in this case, I'm going to um, just go to soft select, turn on it to be linear. And then I'm just going to scale it. Like see, let's see, like that maybe. Ah, it's a bit too strong. I think that will do. Maybe turn off linear and make it smooth again. That looks a little bit better. All right. Cool. So what we're going to do now, we'll quickly smooth this out. Let's just smooth out that dress a little bit. And I'm not being perfect here because, you know, obviously this is a, a piece of experimentation. So we're not going to do too, too many crazy things. But what we can do is in this um, little figure thing here now that's representing our body, we can turn on collision. So we're going to turn on collision onto that object. And um, in this case, oops, I want to probably scale it out just a little bit so we don't get that issue just along the normals, just a little bit so it sticks outwards a little bit. And now we need to change the pinning group on this. So if you go to our, our weight paint settings now, weight paint, and look at our pinning group, we want to kind of clean this up so it's pinned to the body. And then the opposite happens here with the uh, the strength of the, um, the uh, weight paint here. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to a, a weight of one and just paint in um, everything there. So it stays pinned there. And then do the opposite for the uh, the rest of the skirt. So I'm gonna go um, and uh, just weight paint that out. So we can try and get some, um, you know, nice billowiness into this thing. So I'm gonna go straight up until I get to the base of this dress. So that can be a sort of the hem. Yeah, true. I don't really use the gradient tool that much. Um, I probably should. That being said, I don't white paint that often either. All right, so uh, let's just smooth that out just a little bit more. I also like the control of just painting. All right, smooth that out. So now that we got that going on, then we're just going to add a smoothness, just a little bit more smoothing there. And we're just going to make sure that the very top row of um, of verts here are set to one. So we want to make sure that those are completely, you know, painted in with one. So here we go. Sweet. Okay. So let's um, get this up and running. So now we need to add a cloth uh, sim back to this guy here. So I'm going to go to our cloth settings, add a cloth, go straight into our uh, mesh settings here. And we're going to turn on um, object collisions, self collisions, uh, add a pinning group. And let's see what happens now. Oh la la. We got ourselves a dress. How cool is that? <laughs> and the nice thing is that it, it's um, behaving along with the um, the armature because the um, the cloth sim is sitting underneath the armature. Um, it's uh, inheriting the deformation first from the armature and then the cloth after the fact. Oh yeah, I use weights for modifiers uh, tons of times as well for uh, certain things. But you can see how useful this is now. And now all we need to do now, <clears throat> if you want to add a little bit more um, 
you know, softness to this, we can add either some um, extra subdivision to make it inherit that looking a little bit better. Or we can add a um, corrective smooth modifier. So the corrective smooth modifier is awesome. So we switch it from original chords to bind chords because it has all this extra geometry, push bind. And it just softens out those uh, deformations a little bit. So it's a little less um, um, you, raggedy, but we can actually bring down that factor down to maybe two. And we're getting this um, awesome uh, effect coming on. And it's, it, you know, it's behaving just like you'd expect sort of fabric to act like, which is really cool. And if you wanted to add a little bit of thickness to this thing now, we could do that too. So we can go to our um, solidify modifier and add a tiny bit of thickness. Either in one way or the other, probably this way is better in this case. And we got ourselves something like, like this. How cool is that? So in 20 minutes, we've done two different kinds of um, wrinkling going on on our, uh, our stuff there. Yeah, exactly. So you can do that too. So if you wanted to add even more sort of um, dynamism to it, you could add some um, gradation to the um, um, the weights. So the weights are all, you know, you can do anything you like with this setup as well with the, the way you determine the weights. So it's really, really cool. All right, so how about we spend the next um, 25 minutes or half an hour. Unfortunately, I have to finish up at three because I've got a meeting at three. But um, I have uh, some really cool plans going forward with our stream. So I'm planning on, um, I mentioned this last week, but I'm going to mention it again. And I'm probably going to start this week. Um, yeah, you could. Uh, I would say simulate muscle, but you can definitely simulate, um, you can definitely simulate, uh, um, you can definitely simulate uh, skin. Uh, with muscle, it's a little bit different. Uh, you'd have to use probably like soft body or anything like that. Um, but um, with soft bodies, um, you can probably simulate muscles. And there's some um, cool plugins for a muscle sim as well. Everyone heard of X muscle for uh, Blender? So one of the cool things, um, X muscle is really cool. I'm not sure how much it costs, but, um, oh, it's only 35 bucks. Come on. But, um, to save you, oh, in, in this case, 50 bucks for the, um, fancy pants one. But if you want to do muscle deformation, this is probably the easiest way to go about it. So, um, oh no, don't go. That's all good. It's all good. Muscle sim, um, is something I haven't really done much of, but, um, if I was going to do it, I would use, I would definitely use this system most likely. It's probably the most, uh, it seems the most supported for Blender and also seems the most robust. So um, that's the cool thing about this one. All right. So how do we apply this to our dinosaur here? Speaking of dinosaurs. So we have our dinosaur here. I'm going to turn off all these fancy effects. Turn off the cavity, turn off the shadow. It does make a pretty, quite a performance hit on that, by the way. So this uh, dinosaur was, I didn't make this dinosaur. I didn't rig it this dinosaur. This was taken from uh, BlendSwap. So BlendSwap, uh, you may have seen it in the link, but, um, oops, wrong one. So on Twitter, you may have seen my link about the, um, where I got this from, and I want to give credit where credit's due. So, um, uh, this guy, uh, did the, uh, did the model. Yeah. Uh, it's a really cool rig. It's really robust. Uh, definitely give it a go. It's really cool. The only thing I noticed that with 2.9, at least, um, the script doesn't work for the UI and the spine rig setup isn't quite working, but you know, for what we need, this is pretty much perfect. 
So what do I want to do? I want to try and add some um, wrinkles to different parts of the articulation of this dinosaur. So I want to add some, um, I want to add some fleshiness to the uh, the neck there. I want to add some wrinkles to the uh, underarms around there and here, and um, maybe it, where it's compressing there. I want to see if we can add some um, wrinkling there. I'm not sure how well this will perform, but um, it's worth a shot. Let's give it a go. All right, so um, what we're going to do, we're going to um, do the same method, but on the dinosaur. So straight up, I'm going to start from here. I'm going to make sure I save the file. And then I'm going to go into, um, I'm going to hide the rig in my viewport settings as well. So uh, I'm going to hide the armature, hide my lights. So, so I have something clean to work with. And you can see it's quite a dense little creature here and we have a few issues with the geometry it's like a lot of density there but hopefully uh that won't make too much of a problem for us but um we'll see how we go so um let's uh grab uh a cloth modifier oh why is there a solidify there that's interesting that explains why it's so um <laughs> so uh slow let's close turn that off we should have a subdivision modifier on there that's for sure so what we're going to do is grab a subdivision surface just for now and that will run a lot slower you can see it's already running a lot slower <laughs> um but we'll turn it off we'll turn that off for now and then we're going to add a um uh, firstly we'll just try it with the cloth modifier and see if it works because i haven't tried this yet And you can see we need to add all the appropriate um yeah this one will definitely be on youtube so the plan is from now on every monday i'll be doing experiments so every monday will be experimental time so we, we just do crazy fun stuff with uh, blender and 3d in general and then on uh wednesdays and thursdays in the morning so a bit earlier the plan is to just work on uh, black curtain so i'll be doing live streams of black curtain as i work through it on uh, Wednesdays and Thursday mornings uh, for about an hour or two every every week. So um, every Monday, you'll be getting uh, new content to play with and, and watch that are more experimental and fun. And then the other ones will be, um, ah, it's, this is new. I haven't done it yet. <laughs> this will be starting this week. So uh, I've got a few announcements to make about that because uh, there's a few things um, I'm going to announce in the next you know week or so. Uh, but, and one of the big things is the Twitch. Uh, I'm going to try and get Twitch uh, up and running a bit more uh, strongly at this stage. But uh, let's move on to the, um, the cloth and add... Um, firstly, we'll add the uh, the weight paint that we need. So in this case, with the um, this setup, we need to add a new uh, group. We're going to call it pinning yet again. Come on. There it goes, pinning. All right, and let's go into our weight paints. Actually, I'm just gonna go straight to edit mode with this um, dinosaur here and just go straight up 100% on the assignment. So I, all I gotta do now is erase the parts that I don't want the, um, the cl I want the cloth to work on. So um, jumping into um, weight paint now, come on. All right, cool. So jumping into weight paint, I'm going to turn off the, um, I'm going to turn off the normal, uh, sorry, the, um, the wireframe just so I can see what's going on a bit clearer. And I'm going to add uh, or remove, I'm going to remove some of the, um, the, uh, the settings there. So you may be wondering why the setup here is a bit different is because, um, this is a 2.7 file and, um, uh, you know, these settings didn't really exist in the view in the UI. All right. Oh, thanks for, yeah. I hope you guys can stick around for those, uh, streams because those ones will be a bit more professional, um, in terms of, um, my approach. So there, they'll be sort of like, um, more about actually building stuff for production stuff. So, um, that's more about that sort of thing. Let me just turn off the rig for now as well, just so I can,
Is it working? Why is she working? There's always something wrong when it comes to this stuff, isn't it? So we're just going to change it to mix, not add. There we go. And that will fix that up. And make sure that the armature is turned off. Turn off the cloth for now as well, just so we can add the, um, the appropriate weight paints. I'm not sure why it's running so slow, honestly, but, um, it'll be fine. <laughs> I don't, if there's ever an animator that wears a suit, um, it means they hate their job. <laughs> All right, cool. So I'm going to add that there just roughly. Oh, turn off the cloth. That's why it's running like shit. There we go. That's better. Hey, Edward. Uh, thanks for joining. All right. So we're going to add a few more. Um, we're going to add a few more uh, little parts where we want that creasing to happen. So we're gonna add a few there, like around the um, the pits of the arms there. Uh, no, not affiliated yet, cause I don't stream enough. That's why I'm, I'm planning on, um, that's why I plan on uh, streaming more often. I need to clock in over eight hours in the month to be, to be affiliated at least. So um, that's part of the reason why I'm, I'm gonna be uh, streaming a bit more often. I'm starting to get the hang of Twitch now, so uh, yeah, I think it's now time to do that. Um, yeah, go for it. Uh, as I paint this, go, feel free to ask questions. All right, let's get this up and running. All right, so adding the... Um, bit of uh, creasing there. I think I actually turned on lazy, lazy brush. That's all right. So I want to get that creasing up there. Uh, no, I don't actually, I don't, I've never heard of them. Honestly, are they like, um, Sort of like a toon, toony sort of uh, style anime 3D model. I can only assume it is. Turn off the stabilizer, there we go. All right, so we're getting that in there. Let's add uh, a little bit to his belly as well. Hopefully we'll get that jiggle going, coming through nice and, and uh, cleanly. Cool. And we'll add, ah, oh, this is another place I wanted to add some here. All right. Yeah, cool. Yeah, thanks for the share, Milkman Island. All right, let's um, let's see how this looks now. We add a bit, a few wrinkles uh, to this the setup here. So we'll uh, also smooth out the um, let's smooth out the uh, the weights there. So we just add a few smooth um, iterations. So smooth that out, smooth it out, smooth it out. Uh, it just takes time. I've been doing this like you know. I wouldn't say I'm a uh, I'm I'm that great at everything. Um, it just takes practice, um, and even then, I'm still learning myself every day. All right, let's just go back and turn on the armature, and turn on the cloth, and we're going to go into the settings now and set it back to silk. And we're going to um, do the same thing. So we're going to add uh, collisions, self collisions. We're going to add pinning. In this case, we have to find it. And then we're going to pray that this thing works. 
So I'm going to save that first before we do anything. And in this case, I think um, I might do caching. So we can actually set up the cache to be 80 frames. And uh, before I add the subdivision, I just want to bake it and see if it works. So let it think. And you can see the bake can be pretty slow. <laughs> Smash that save button, totally. And we'll see how this works. Hopefully we'll be able to see the jiggle in the um, the throat as he uh, walks side to side. Well, luckily the uh, blender... Oh, you want, you want to do that debate? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I have no issue with ZBrush. It's just really complicated to learn. Uh, I could see the merit in it. Um, I haven't really been a... I haven't used ZBrush all that much myself, but um, yeah, it can. I can see the uh, the absolute necessity if you're doing that every day. ZBrush would be the way to go. I know, as as weird as it sounds, I was probably too young for uh, SolidWorks in a way. I you know by the time I started doing 3D, SolidWorks was already kind of um, done for, I guess. Uh, Fusion 360. I think they can. I think they canned that shit uh, recently. Do I 3D print stuff? Nah, I don't. I can't afford it. <laughs> I know how to do it. I know how to set it up. I know how to um, make sure that things work for 3D printing. But yeah, I I just can't afford to do it. Um, I think, um, for your short film, if you're working with a small, uh, well, when I say performance budget, stylize is always the way to go. Keeping it simple and low poly as much as possible. So work with the limitations and then you'll, you'll find yourself, um, being able to make stories regardless of your performance, uh, um, requirements, uh, avoid hair, like, you know, physics, Avoid that sort of shit. Um, keep it simple. There's a reason why there's so many YouTube videos out there for kids cartoons because they just work with such low budget stuff and uh, they get away with it. Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't like to just do things without explaining myself. It, otherwise, just confusing otherwise. Yeah, Lightning Boy, that fucking video, that channel is mad. Um, really complicated shaders for something like a tune shaders, but they're really effective. Uh, I, I usually just take chunks, little chunks from their, their recommendations. Like, um, like for mine two shaders, I don't go that far. All right, let's see if this worked. Ah, okay. There he goes. Okay. 80, 90. Okay. Done. All right. Ah, oh, <laughs> damn. How cool is that? Look at that throat. We're getting some proper jowlage going on. How cool is that? And if we look at the back of his, um, the skin of the back of his, uh, you know, well, where his balls would be, <laughs> which he doesn't have, um, we're getting some really cool stretching of the skin there. How cool is that? And you can see it working its magic inside the armpits. Like... Sick. And it doesn't look like we would actually need to do um, the subdivision. I don't think we'd actually need to have the subdivision in that to make that look that I think that's enough uh, geometry there to make it feel realistic. Otherwise, I think it actually would be too much, um, too much uh, uh, folding and creasing for it to be um, working with, um, you know, working with, uh, you know, this sort of skin. 
So if we just put the subdivision now beneath the cloth and turn that on. Odds are it'll look pretty good. I mean, it's running like shit. But let's do a, let's do a play blast and uh, give that a go. All right, let's go to view. Let's go to uh, viewport render, uh, animation. So it's only going to render the viewport, not the actual, um, not the actual animation. It's not going to render that out. So a play blast is a. Uh, it comes from I, I wouldn't call it a Maya terminology, but a play blast is like a um, a preview version of the animation. Like you render out the animation from the viewport just to make sure that the animation looks good when you play it in real time. So. Um, you basically set up your render output to be, you know, wherever you need it to be. And then you go to, uh, you know, you set your file format to FFM PEG video, change the codec to MP4, all that bullshit. And then just go to view, um, viewport render animation, and it will render the animation from the viewport. And that means you can, you can test out the, uh, yeah, it's a quick video. It's a quick, um, dirty video to test out the animation to make sure it's working. Like you don't want to, you don't want to animate a scene and then, uh, render it in full quality and only to find out that the animation sucks. You want to test out the animation first and you get much better, quicker, uh, feedback. So if we go to our, our, um, our playback now, you can see that the, uh, the skin is looking sick, man. How cool is that? And you can see it, you know, you can see it's doing its magic in real time. So I feel we can actually add a few more um, pieces of, um, a few more pieces of uh, skin manipulation. So I actually think we can add some to the feet there if you wanted to as well. But um, let's try one other thing before we uh, wrap up. Yeah, it's fucking sick, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> so let's um, let's try and add um, let's try and do this with a bit of clothing again. So I'm I'm really happy with this result, uh, and I think that's enough to do a, a proper render with. Um, so I'm really happy with that, and we only did it in like you know 20 minutes, 40 minutes. So um, I think we have some time. We have about 20 minutes to uh, try and do something with um. Yeah, let's try and do something with uh, one of my characters. So um, let's open up. Let's open up Evie and see what we can do with her clothing. So let's go up. Let's go to my um, character. Sorry, I, I'm getting lost in my own shit sometimes. Um, see users I always back up my actual film stuff to the cloud so I have it all in one drive oh thanks Dantan 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 <laughs> all right let's add let's open up um oh I actually I'll show you what I did with Evie's at leg I mean I'm not I'm not sure if I'm actually gonna do this with um with um my characters but like because i can't be fucked uh, i'm kind of feeling like i will because i don't want to i can't be bothered doing corrective blend shapes all the time right so i'm like maybe i'll just use cloth or something similar to um to do this with so where's evie number where is she 36 there she is So we have, um, I actually added a, uh, a cloth sim to, um, her leg. <laughs> so, um, let me play that back and you'll see what I mean. So what I've done, I tested out the same method on the, as I did with the dinosaur, but on Evie's, um, knee, just to see if it works. It's not a hundred percent there, but it helps, um, with compression and um this kind of would be similar to a muscle sim but it's more of a skin simulation 
So what I've done in her knee bend, if you turn it off, that's what it looks like without the cloth. And that's what it looks like with the cloth uh, turned on. It's sort of adding compression to her legs, which is kind of interesting. Obviously I'd have to bake that shit in, but um, yeah, it's just an interesting way of trying to compensate for things that you can't be fucked doing in, um, in real time. But um, what you could do, actually I might do this with another demo. Yeah, it's subtle. Uh, if you were far, far enough away from um, the camera, you wouldn't really notice the um, any of the artifacts that come up. But I'm going to try and do a hoodie. Let's try and make a hoodie for a character with uh, another another um, with another sort of R and D method methodology. So we're going to um, make a sphere. Oops. So let's make a sphere to represent a face. Actually, let's use the monkey. Fuck it. Monkey. We've got a face. We may as well use it. What we're going to do, we're going to add a, uh, <laughs> let's add a, um, a bit of a, a body to this guy. So I'm just going to add a neck and a, um, let's add a neck and, uh, a, a, some shoulders to this guy. All right, so I'm gonna add, uh, I'm gonna go to my circularized tools, uh, make it circularized. That didn't work quite work, that's all right. E in the X. All right, cool. I think that'll do. And we'll add a few subdivisions there. And uh, I'm just gonna smooth that out. The only reason I'm doing the shoulders is so we have something to work with. Um, we have something to work with with the simulation to sit on. So uh, there we go. That will do. All right. So let's add um, the bones. I've got 15 minutes to do this. So let's uh, try and smash it out. Go to visibility. Uh, turn on in front. So again, I'm just going to do two bones. Actually, I don't need the, uh, yeah, actually, yes. Three bones. I'm going to have three bones because the top bone will act as the pin for the, uh, the hood. So as weird as it sounds, I'm not actually going to be animating the head of the bunky or of Susan. I'm going to be animating the clothing. I'm just going to put it into a uh, hoodie test. All right. So uh, let's try and do uh, an animated hood that will work with the uh, the monkey. So I'm just going to um, I'm going to grab a cylinder. I'm going to chop off the top and bottom. Oops. Oops. Working too fast now for my own good. All right. Scale that in like so. So I'm just going to quickly model a uh, really crappy hoodie. All right, let's get that in there. All right. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to, to um, just going to ex extrude out a hoodie just like this. I think that will work well. E scale in the X and I might actually do it like this. Something like that. Not sure where that are oh, because I accidentally filled it up. That's okay. We're being very rough today, so it doesn't really matter. 
All right, so what we're going to do I'm going to do one more extrusion inwards just to represent the hood. Let's go that flat in the uh, the Z and the Y. All right, cool. So uh, let's just grab that and uh, I'm going to flatten those scale at zero and smooth that out again. Just so it, they, they work well enough. All right, cool. That'll do. And I'm just going to make a really quick and dirty um, sim first, just to settle the uh, the hoodie. And then I'm going to um, make sure I have enough geometry there as well. So after I've done this, we can work with the um, the setup here. So I'm going to make a, an, an initial pin group for the hoodie itself uh, in my settings here. So vertex group assign um, for the pinning there, pin, assign. All right, cool. And I just want to settle that out first. So I'm just going to add a cloth sim and add a collision to the monkey. And then in the cloth sim of the, um, the hoodie, we can add, um, again, collisions. So we're going to add some self collisions, object collisions. Uh, we'll add um, the pinning. Where is it? Pinning, pinning, pinning. Shape, pin group, pin. Save. Let that <laughs> do its thing. And we can add a bit more... Um, We can add a bit more uh, settings there. We're going to turn on the uh, the silk preset again, maybe even the cotton preset. Let's try that again. Let's try silk. You can see the difference there. All right, it's kind of looking like a Darth Susan at the moment. <laughs> so that's fine. Or like ET even. Got an ET vibe going on there, but it will do. So what I'm going to do with this cloth sim first is I'm going to apply this one. So control A in um, Blender 2.9, control A to apply the simulation. So now that's done. I'm just going to go into the sculpt mode now and uh, smooth that out a little bit just so we can see what's going on a little bit better. And I'll, uh, you know, make that a bit higher. There we go. That will do. And now what we're going to do, we're going to, um, we're going to grab this uh, geometry and make it a child of the, um, the hoodie with automatic weights. So what we're going to have in the end is something like this pretty standard stuff. Um, but in this case, actually, now we can, um, add, actually, I don't need to, I don't want to have that working as a, uh, deformer. All right. So I'm going to turn off the deformation on that for now. And, uh, let's rebind that. So I'm going to remove the, uh, the weights on those and start again. So I just want to use, in this case, I just want the, um, yeah, I just want the base of the mesh here to be, um, skinned. And I want this little bone here, this bone here to be the, the thing that drives the pin group at the top there as well. So we can try and see if that works. So what we would need to do is, yeah, we're just gonna try and make this work. I'm not sure if it will, but it's worth a shot. So let's give this a go. We're going to uh, skin. All right, sweet. Let's just uh, 
Bind with empty groups. Bind with empty groups. And then we're going to uh, go into our weight paint mode. Make sure I have bone one selected. Oops, sorry. Let's just make sure I have the bone turned on. Object mode, select, and then white paint. There we go. So we can actually see what's going on. All right, let's turn on the strength of that. So we have some deformation going on on the uh, base there. So we have something that keeps it still. And this will be uh, the pin group as well. The pin group will be the same weights kind of as the um, the mesh, uh, the deformation mesh as well. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. Um, All right, let's get that up and running. I've got five minutes to make this work. If it doesn't work, that's all right. All right, that will do for now. And for the, um, the top here, this bone here, I actually want to make that uh, deforming as well, but the pin group will drive, be driven by this bone up here. All right, I think I know what to do now. Yeah, I think this will work. So what we need to do is uh, select everything. I might actually just do automatic weights in the end. I think I know how this is gonna work. So um, turn on the form, have everything uh, be manipulated by those weights. So, um, Let's see how this animates first. Uh, rock, rock scale, lot rock scale, and so on. So in this case, I just want to bend the um, the mesh back a little bit, like so. So as long as that that pinning group is being driven by the um, the deformation, <laughs> yeah, totally. As long as it's being driven by the deformation there, it should be fine. So that should be working okay. So what we need to do now is add the uh, the cloth sim. So let's add the uh, cloth. Where are we? Cloth, go into the sim settings, switch it over to silk. Turn on collisions, self collisions, and turn on um, let's see, where are we? Cache, pressure, collisions, sorry. I'm getting mixed up in my own stuff. Pin group, add the pin group, and let's see what happens. <laughs> kind of worked. So all we need to do now, I think, is add a bit more geometry to the mix. So in this case, we're going to add a subdivision modifier and place it on top of the cloth and just hope this doesn't crash. Oh, getting there. We are so getting there. And the reason why it's uh, delaying is because again, the um, the pin group is also being driven by the um, the armature. So there is a level of, you know, tweaking to make that work. So um, in the white paint, I could probably just make this um, completely red. <laughs> that will drive the, um, the right setup, I think. There we go. Yeah, you can see it's working better now. 
but yeah you can see how you can combine um you know real real physics with your armatures and stuff like that as well which is really cool and if, with a little bit of tweaking to the um the settings in the um the mesh settings there or the collision settings so if you go to the cloth and make them a little bit smaller the collisions so maybe uh, 0 0.05 005 and 0 0.005 again that will probably work a bit better but again it also depends on the the density of the um the suzanne model as well so that put the subdivision above the um the collision and you'll get a smoother um deformation Well, there it goes. There we go. Now you can see it's working a lot better there. And obviously, we because we didn't really tweak the settings too much, we don't have much to play with, but, you know, it's working. It's working. But I'm very proud of the, uh, the dinosaur. <laughs> I think the dinosaur's mad. So going back to the dinosaur, for those who didn't see it in the last two seconds before, um, if you didn't see it earlier... This is what it looks like. Super happy with that result. And yeah, I think I'll have to wrap up now because I got a meeting in about 30 seconds that I got to attend to. So in that case, I'm going to say goodbye. Thanks for watching. Uh, it's been awesome. Super fun doing this experiment. So the next time you'll see me will be... Um, yeah, exactly. With better topo. Exactly. Better topology. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Thanks for joining me. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you later. And I'll probably see you on uh, Wednesday morning. All right. See you then. Bye.